Resurrection gives us forgiveness and hope. Our scripture reading today comes to us from Paul's letter to the Church of Corinth, the first letter, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 12 through 20. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died or have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all of, of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep or who have died. Paul is having an argument with someone that is familiar and a member of nearly every congregation. Some people. Oh, um, you don't come across some people in the membership directory? Well, apparently in Corinth, some people, we don't know of all, we don't know of most, but are denying the resurrection as being an actuality or something to even believe in or hope for. And Paul renders their argument by going through the logical conclusions of such an argument. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then what we proclaim to you was false. And if what we proclaim to you was false and Christ has not been risen from the dead, then the forgiveness of sins offered through Christ's resurrection is also not possible. And you are dead in your sins. And if that also happened, then we are to be more than pitied because we are silly enough to still believe that there is hope involved in God's action. The opposite of faith is not doubt, it's certainty. And certainly, Prior to this, Paul has outlined the list of witnesses that provide the evidence that the resurrection has happened. But if one does not trust, have faith in Christ's resurrection, then indeed one ha has no need or meaning and purpose in having hope and probably also has no hope in the forgiveness of sins because Christ is dead. And those who believed in Christ and the resurrection would also be dead. And we would be silly indeed. But as Paul speaks at the end, this would be crazy if it had not happened. Resurrection assures us of hope. Resurrection provides us with the possibility and, frankly, through God's loving mercy, the probability of the forgiveness of sin extended to each and every one of us. So hold out hope. Resurrection is a sign of God's presence, of God's work and God's purpose. Christ is the first fruit. Now, Paul's talking about Old Testament here. And first fruits were always devoted and given to God. If we hold on to the trust of the already harvest, we too will be part of the same harvest. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that the witness of the resurrection means that there is hope and forgiveness in you, with you, and for us. Help us to trust and have hope that indeed 
the first fruits have arrived, and the rest of the harvest is being gathered. Amen. Blessings to you and yours this day and always. Goodbye.